Second Meeting, Monday, June 10th, 1974. Adzan Mahabua began by asking the following question. Is there anything in particular that you would like to discuss today? When those in the room remained silent, he then spoke as follows. Sitting in meditation while listening to an explanation of Tamma will greatly help to calm the jitta. I shall therefore begin with an explanation of Tamma, and while you are listening, please feel free to make use of whatever method of meditation you have practiced before. When the jitta is calm, you will naturally receive the taste of Tamma, each according to his own level of practice. The Buddhist religion which we profess today is the Tamma to which the Buddha had attained. His name was Samarnagotama. He searched for and practiced many ways which he saw would bring him to the attainment of the Satcha Tamma, truth, that he was seeking. The word Tamma means the teaching of a Buddha, which is a new Tamma and a new era that follows upon the enlightenment of each Buddha and the teaching which he gives to the world. Truly speaking, the real Tamma is always in the world right from the beginning, but this real, original Tamma is never touched by that which is conventional or mundane, Sammati, even though it is always in contact with the heart. But although these forms of Tamma are always present in the world, we lack the ability to see them. What sort of thing is Tamma? There is Tamma as cause and Tamma as result. Because of this, people are led to think in all sorts of ways that have almost nothing to do with tamma or religion. The word sasana means teaching, the teaching which arose as the result of those practices done by the Buddha as he searched for knowledge and truth until he found it. Because he searched in the right way, he attained results which satisfied his heart. He then proclaimed this teaching to those people in the world who were suited to receive the sasana tamma the training and teaching of Buddhism. Teaching Tamma to a world full of blindness so that it would come to know the truth was very difficult for the Buddha. It was no light task. Before he proclaimed his teaching to the world, men already had various thoughts and ideas, the majority of which were contradictory to the Tamma. Teaching was therefore very difficult, but being one of the great teachers of the world means taking a great burden on oneself. Very few people desire to become a Buddha because ordinary men, unlike Buddhas, do not want to shoulder the great burden of teaching the world. No one can teach the people of the world as correctly or as accurately as the Buddha did, so he was given the name the highest teacher in the world. There is no one comparable to the Buddha because he is superior to all human beings. His teaching is fully complete in both cause and effect. Nothing is missing from the teachings which he taught to all beings. With regards to Tamma, he explained wholesome Gusala and unwholesome Akusala and neither wholesome nor unwholesome Abhyagata Tamma. This Tamma is Svakata Tamma. Tamma which is well explained. The essence of this Tamma is in the Eightfold Path, which is the middle way. If we were to compare the middle way to food, its taste would be delicious, for it would not be too salty, too tasteless, or too spicy. If we were to compare it to clothes, it would be well cut and tailored to fit the person wearing it. It would not be like inexpensive clothes which are mass-produced. The teaching of Tamma is therefore the middle way, which is appropriate in both its causes and its effects from the beginning to the end. Not only is Tamma the middle way, but also the things that we depend on in the world. If we tried to do everything in the middle way, it would be something worth seeing, worth admiring, worth living in and making use of. Those men and women, monks and novices who practiced the Tamma of the middle way, would be lovely persons worthy of respect. Both the world and the Tamma would be cool and quiet, so it would be a good world to live in. There would be no complaining that the world is in trouble, or we are in trouble, or he is in trouble, as is heard at present. Everything is burning with trouble now, so we have practically no world left to live in. 
This is because people do not take into consideration the principles of Thamma which are correct and good. A world divorced from Thamma, that is, goodness, is therefore a world which is contrary to Thamma. People are contrary to Thamma, and this contrariness to Thamma has the power to produce endless worry and confusion. As long as we refuse to see our faults and refuse to stop our opposition to Thamma, this world will continue to experience Dukkha. Magga means the path which the Buddha declared using the principles of the Middle Way. It is therefore the only path which always leads straight and steadfastly to Vimutti, freedom. It is never outdated and never has to be altered or changed in any way to keep up with changing situations and changing times. Even if all things should go on changing until they turn and turn about, the Thamma of the Middle Way, Madhima Thamma, will still be the Thamma which is always consistent. If we liken it to a medicine, it would be a medicine that doctors have already experimented with and proven the worth of, and which is being used to cure disease. All tammas have already been completely tried and proven by the Buddha, so there's no reason for doubting or being skeptical about them, for the proving of these tammas resulted in the enlightenment of the Buddha. Furthermore, all of the Buddha's disciples also attained the field of Vimutti by means of these tammas in the same way. We have come together today to train our minds to be calm and cool. The normal state of the mind is such that it has no middle way. It continually tends to go to the extremes of thinking and imagining, so its moods are always in a state of confusion. Or, in other words, what the heart is used to and likes leads it away from what it should be doing. We must therefore make use of the Tamma principles of the Buddha as a means to train the Jitta to be calm, and however much or little one does this, it will not be without results. Whoever makes use of any method of meditation, as, for example, paying attention to one's breath, anapanasati, or the repetition, parikamma, of butto, tammo, or sankho, should have mindfulness to control the jitta. The jitta should not be allowed to wander, for if it does, you will not get good results and the jitta will not get calm. In the tamma it says, natizande barang sukang, which means, there is no happiness greater than peace. This shows that the jitta must be peaceful and calm to attain happiness, so you should try to make it calm. The jitta which is not calm will tend to be agitated continually, so even when it's asleep it dreams of all sorts of things. If your jitta thinks a lot, it will cause fantastic dreams and talking in your sleep. For when your sleep is not deep, dreaming will occur, whereas a deep sleep is a sleep without dreams. So train to make the jitta calm down. Whether the jitta becomes calm and to what degree will depend on the ability of each person. If the jitta is very calm, there will be a great deal of happiness. This is the first step of the training. The value of the mind will then be apparent to you so that you can admire it at that time while it is peaceful, because there is nothing of greater value than a quiet mind. I would ask that you make your minds steadily overcome the difficulties and laziness which are things that usually overcome us the whole time. We believe that we cannot overcome them because we have seen their power, but if we think we are able to fight them and if we really do fight them, then the time will arrive when we can overcome them. We hear of victories in regard to such things as sports, but with regard to gilesas, defilements, we only hear of giving in to them. Perhaps this is because we fall on our faces before the Gilesas and let them walk all over our backs. The Buddha's religion shook the world because it was tested and proven by someone whose heart was pure. The enlightenment of the Buddha shook his heart. That is, it shook the Gilesas in his heart just as if the world itself were shaken. Even though we have never before seen or experienced any results from Buddhism, we will surprise ourselves when the jitta becomes calm, because this initial training will greatly move the heart when the jitta and tamma come together in a state of unreserved completeness. Religion, sasana, is not a trifling matter. It exists with every one of us. It is not just a thing of this person or that person, nor does it just belong to the Buddha. 
He taught us so that we would be good people and have worth appropriate to a human being. He taught that the virtue and value which comes from the religion is our own wealth, right up to the path, fruition, and nibbana. This lies within the reach of each Buddhist who resolves to practice. He can be one who possesses and savors the results of it endlessly. Unlike other forms of wealth that people crave, which are impermanent, anitsa, unsatisfactory, dukkha, and not self, anatta, the wealth of Buddhism never runs out. Therefore, Buddhism belongs to each of us, and not only to this or that ethnic group, class, or caste. Questions and Answers First question, Man 1. What is the jitta? Is it not attention? Answer. In the four ittibada, paths of accomplishment, jitta is attention. When it is combined with recollecting, it becomes mindfulness, sati. The jitta likes to go wherever it pleases, and in whatever the jitta does, it is not afraid of doing wrong, nor is it afraid of danger. If mindfulness does not restrain it, it may stray and go for unchecked pleasure-seeking. To make an analogy, the jitta is like an animal, and mindfulness is like the person who trains and controls the animal. If the jitta which is possessed by gilesas is trained and controlled by mindfulness, it will slowly become disciplined, and the gilesas can then be eradicated. When it is also accompanied by wisdom, banya, to investigate and extract the gilesas, the jitta will become clearer and brighter. When the jitta becomes brighter and brighter, you will discover that the jitta is becoming more and more subtle, and that it has more strength and power. The jitta can become pure through the practice of meditation, but you cannot understand the jitta merely by reading books, for you can only come to know the real jitta by practicing the way. Then you will gradually come to see the true nature of the jitta a little more each time, until you see it clearly and all doubts vanish. Practice is therefore extremely important if you want to know the jitta, because you can come to know the real jitta absolutely clearly and eliminate all doubts only by means of practice. There is no other way in which you can know it. Second question, Woman 1. People in England study Buddhism from books. They do not know that there is a jitta, because Buddhism is not taught here according to the Satipatthana Sutta. The result is that people are led to understand that the jitta is mindfulness and wisdom. I therefore think it necessary for Venerable Banyawarto to have Ajahn Mahabua give us some understanding of the jitta. Venerable Banyawarto to Ajahn Mahabua in Thai. People in this country understand jitta to mean thinking. They understand that the jitta is divided into the forms of the jitta which come from seeing, hearing, tasting, smelling, and touching. In other words, consciousness, vinyarna. Answer. That aspect of the jitta which arises when something comes into contact with eyes, ears, nose, etc., and which knows and receives that contact is called consciousness, vinyarna. It arises and ceases together with that contact. As for the jitta that knows these things, it does not cease together with the consciousness when it ceases. It does not cease even though the body ceases, for it will go on and take rebirth in the future. There is no end to it as long as the sap of the heart, which is the gilesas and avidja, ignorance, remains in the heart. But when this sap of the gilesas has been removed from the heart, there is an end to continual becoming and birth, as happened with the Buddha and his Arahant disciples. Third question, Man 1. This one who knows, which we call our self, is this not atta, or is it anatta, not self? Answer. If we compare the one who knows with stairs, such as the ones used to reach this room, then we will have to take hold of them as self, and let go of each step one after the other until we reach this room, which is our goal. If at the beginning we do not cling to the self, we can go widely off course because we have no basis to hold on to. We have to make use of the self as the way which will lead us to the state of not clinging to self. Therefore, at this stage, we should not go thinking about self and not self, atta and anatta. We must at first make use of self before we can reach our goal. The questions of atta, anatta, and the jitta will be dropped by itself, 
just as happened when we climbed the staircase until we reached this room, when the problem of us and the staircase vanished of its own accord. Fourth question, man two. When we compare the jitta to the stairs, must we let go of the jitta in the same way we let go of the stairs when we reach the last step? Answer. When we have trained the jitta, we gain different levels, and we let go of each level until we reach the last step. It then stops by itself, and we do not have to force it. If one is going to do this, one must reach the level of super-mindfulness, mahasati, and super-wisdom, mahapanya, because this is the level which is suitable for letting go of the conventional world, sammuti, in all its aspects. From that point on, there is no more attachment or clinging in the jitta. Fifth question. Woman 2. What are some of the benefits of meditation? Answer. You become calm. The heart is cool, peaceful, completely rational, and self-controlled. You do not do anything following your desires that is contrary to reason. You will always consider what is good and what is bad, both for yourself and for others. It makes you become a person who does not feel the dukkha of gloominess always in your heart. The heart will have a basic principle and will not drift about aimlessly as it used to. It is like a man who has a job as his basic principle, or who has food and a house to live in and depend on. Such a person is not troubled. Sixth question, woman two. How do we train ourselves in meditation? Answer. You can use the method of anapanasati or the method of repeating buddho, tammo, or sankho. It depends on the nature of each person. The various methods of meditation will all bring calm to the heart, and even if one uses the word death as the preparatory repetition, this is also training the heart, for it is important that the heart gets a feeling of sorrow and weariness of itself. It will then see the evil in those things which the heart clings to, things which one really likes. Why, when we train the citta, do we focus the citta on only this or that object? In focusing the citta to be on the breath, we should know the breath as it goes in and out at the nose all the time, but this is not a breathing exercise. This is like using bait to catch a fish. What you want to catch is the fish. Or, if we make a simile to the citta of someone who has not yet been trained, his jitta will be scattered in various places, like a fish net which has been cast into the water and spreads out wide until one can no longer see what it looks like. If we want to know the jitta, we will have to take hold of the leader, that is, the string on the net which one uses to draw it together. When we pull on the leader, the rest of the net comes together until we can see it and hold it in our hands. The jitta is where we ourselves are. We are the owners of the jitta, but we cannot force it to become whatever we want it to be. We assume that form, ropa, memory, sanya, feeling, vedana, thoughts, sankara, and consciousness, vinyarna, are the jitta, but in reality, these aggregates can all be separated from each other. We can begin to see this when we practice meditation. Then we will be able to promote the jitta so that it improves. When we have practiced, we will gradually see that the jitta is the lord of birth and death. If we make merit, practice generosity, guard our moral precepts, and practice meditation, we promote the jitta so that it improves, it becomes brighter, and is raised to a higher level. But if we follow our desires and are not afraid of demerit and unwholesomeness, the jitta will do whatever it likes. Not being controlled, the jitta will deteriorate and meet with nothing but dukkha. When we are downhearted and don't know what to do, we let go and are then besieged by dukkha even though we are aware of the problem. It is because people do not know how to change dukkha into happiness that we experience dukkha, and dukkha is just what we don't want. The jitta that has been trained until it is freed from defilements, and therefore pure, must still depend on the aggregates while they remain alive. But the duty and work of one whose jitta is pure will be only for the good of the world. This pure jitta is called arahant or arahat. The person who is an arahant has a jitta that is entirely pure in all respects. His jitta is completely free from anything that can cause it to be born again. While he is still alive, it will encounter happiness which is entirely satisfying. When he dies, it has absolute bliss and it has no dukkha, nor any involvement with the mundane, relative world, Samudhi. Thus there is a saying of the Buddha which states, 
Nibbanang paramang sunyang, which means Nibbana is entirely empty, empty of all dukkha. But it does not mean that when one has attained Nibbana there is nothing left, as the world understands emptiness to mean. But one also does not exist in the way that the world exists. In other words, the happiness of Nibbana is happiness specific to Nibbana without any of the mundane conventions. If the jitta still wears the form of the aggregates when the defilements have been completely eradicated, it means that it has attained to freedom. Freedom, vimutti, and the mundane world, sammudhi, are very different from each other. It is difficult to compare the world of sammudhi, which has mundane conventions, with what has not, which is vimutti. Buddhism has the purpose of teaching us how to make our jitta pure, so that we can experience the sublime happiness of Vimutti. Seventh question, Woman 3. Yesterday, Venerable Banyawato said we must use energy in practicing meditation. Today you are talking about recollecting, which concerns the brain. I understand, then, that jitta means energy and brain. Is that correct? Venerable Banyawato to Ajahn Mahabua in Thai. Two or three days ago I explained that we must use energy in meditation practice. I also explained that when we are too intense the mind will be in turmoil, and that we must make a mental note of it. Answer. In learning about and practicing the Tamma of the Buddha, we must gradually use more and more mindfulness and wisdom from the very first stage of the training until we reach the level of super-mindfulness, Mahasati. We study and practice meditation because we want to make the jitta calm, for the peaceful chitta is of great worth. It's like when we wake up from a deep sleep, the chitta is bright. But when we do not sleep soundly, or sleep badly and dream and talk in our sleep, then we wake up feeling dull and sleepy. In sound sleep, the chitta drops into the state of palanga, a state that the chitta reverts to when undisturbed, the place of deep sleep where dreaming does not occur. After deep sleep, the aggregates are rested and energetic, and the jitta is cheerful. By entering samadhi, the jitta can become completely still and quiet. The heart is then always naturally happy and strong, so that in reading, thinking, or doing other jobs, the jitta will be clear and relaxed. When thinking, it will be able to see through things more clearly than usual. Therefore, Training the jitta by way of either samadhi or wisdom in accordance with the principles of Buddhism is a good way to help us in our work. Contrary to what people generally understand, it does no harm to our livelihood. Those who think that it does are only nominally believers and know nothing about Buddhism. Therefore, in striving with perseverance so as to get results, we must use diligence and determination, but these must be used differently in different cases. If we want to attain calm, we must use determination to aim for a single spot. In other words, we must quell mental distractions. But if we are going to contemplate so as to know the Tamma truths, we must use hard work and determination in observing and develop understanding in the Tamma from various viewpoints. When we are aiming for the arising of wisdom, we must use hard work and determination in the investigation of causes and their effects in various ways. Eighth question, woman four. If we are tired from working so that the mind is very distracted and dull, should we sleep or should we practice meditation? Answer. You should sleep, but this depends on circumstances. If it will help the jitta to be calm and help you to sleep well, then you should also practice meditation. When you practice meditation until sleep comes, then the jitta will be peaceful and the body can rest. So you should not stop using your usual method of practice if there is enough time to do it.